So today our goal is to um, introduce some imaginary numbers. We're going to learn how to simplify a radical that has negatives in it and understand the basics of um, the powers of i and what i is. So first to do that I'd like to just recall how to solve a quadratic equation. So if you look at this first example here, if I wanted to solve now since there's only x and no, I'm um, sorry, x squared and there's no x, my first step is I can add the 7 here. I get x squared equals 36. And then when I square root, the square root and the squared cancel out. I have to remember to put positive or negative, and then the square root of 36 is 6. So my answers here are, are negative 6 and positive 6. So that's how I can solve quadratics here. Now if I were to try to this example over here, when I subtract 9, I get that x squared equals negative 4. Then I want a square root. But as of now, we have learned that I cannot take the square root of a negative. So here, we've learned that there is no solution because that cannot work. We cannot have a negative in the square root. You could try it in the calculator. I'm doing it in my calculator and it tells me error, non-real answer, which is exactly what it is. So we now needed to expand, we needed to expand the natural numbers and include something called imaginary numbers. Now, I'm not saying imaginary, meaning they, they're invisible. What I mean by imaginary is it uses this letter i. i is represented by the square root of negative 1. That is what i is. It's an imaginary number. It's almost like how you know that the symbol pi is 3.1415 dot 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 dot. Um, so we have set numbers. So this, this letter or set variables. We have this variable i represents the square root of negative 1. Now that's very helpful because if I want to simplify the square root of negative 1, I could just say, hey, this is equal to i. And now we learned about imaginary numbers. So now if I want to simplify this, the negative, so this is like saying, the square root of negative 1 times square root of 16. So the reason why that's important is because the negative 1 comes out as the i, and the square root of 16 is 4. So we have i times 4, which is just 4i. And then here, this is like saying the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. So the square root of negative 1 is i, and I can't do anything to the square root of 7, so I leave it as i square root of 7. And in this last example, I have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 24. But the square root of 24 can be simplified. We could do 4 times 6. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, and you can't do the square root of 6. And negative, the square root of the negative 1 is i, so really this is 2i square root of 6 because these are both outside the radical and I leave what's inside the radical. So, so far that's what an imaginary number is and that's why it helps us simplify negative roots. It's whenever I have a negative, it comes out of the radical as i. And, and now I want to discuss the powers of i. So what do I mean by the powers of i? I mean that i to the first power, i to the second power, i to the third power, i to the fourth power. So I just want to make sure you see that um, this is going to be used frequently now that we've expressed or learned about imaginary numbers. So the next thing I want to talk about are the powers of i. What that means is, you know, i to the first, to the second, to the third. So let's see what that means. So i to the first power is really just one of these, which means that just equals i. Then one to the second power, I'm sorry, i to the second power 
means the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is actually, if you notice, they're both the same. So the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1 because it's like this. Square root of negative 1 squared. Remember, a square root and a squared cancel out. So i to the second power equals negative 1. Then i to the third power. So now, that's 1, 2, 3. So really here I get the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1, which we just said that the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1, and that the square root of negative 1 is i. So it's negative 1i, or some people write it as negative i. And then to the fourth power, I'm actually going to change the color. You guys know me and my colors. So then looking at i to the fourth power, that's four of these. One, two, three, four. Which this is like saying the square root of negative one squared and another square root of negative one squared. So here I get negative one times negative one, which is a positive one. So those four main ones that I just figured out, or I just did with you, are very important. So i to the first power, oops. So i to the first power is i. i to the second power is negative one. i to the third power is equal to negative i. And then i to the fourth power is equal to positive one. So these four pieces of information are important and you're going to see in just a moment why. Let's change that to look more like an i. Alright, so let's try i to the fifth power. Now I'm really going to break it down into, um, you know, how many i squareds I have. So this is like saying this is like saying i squared and another i squared and an i, or really I can use the fact that I know it's technically i to the fourth power times i, which we just found out that i to the fourth power is equal to one. So this is like saying one times i, which is just i. So i to the fifth power equals i. i to the sixth power, this is like saying i to the fourth power times i to the second power, which we saw before, i to the fourth power is one, and i to the second power is negative one. So this is like saying one times negative one, which is negative one. So i to the sixth power, is negative 1. Now i to the seventh power is like saying i to the fourth times i to the third, which we again know i to the fourth is positive 1 times i to the third power is negative i. So 1 times negative i is negative i. So i to the seventh gives us negative i. Then i to the eighth power is like saying i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is one times one, which gives me one. So i to the eighth power is one. So if you take a look here, it's actually it's a pattern. i, negative one, negative i, one. And that cycle continues. So one, i to the first power, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, now, if I find i to the ninth, I bet you it's going to equal i. If I find to the tenth, I bet you it's going to be negative 1. 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's a cycle of with the powers of I, and that cycle will repeat. So I'm just going to organize our thoughts here on this chart. So I'm going to copy over those four main pieces of information. I to the first power is I. I to the second power is negative 1. I to the third power is negative I. And I to the fourth power is 1. Why did I make that chart? Because now I know that if I do, if I continue this cycle, so it's going to continue in this cycle. It'll go like this. Oops. It'll go down this, and then it'll come back up. And it'll go down again and come back up. So I like to draw it as a circle sometimes. So I like to draw it like this. Um, I would like to do, you know, um, I'm going to break this up. Let me break it up here. I to the first power. Then I to the second power. Then I to the third power. Then I to the fourth power. And this cycle, you see, when I say cycle, I mean it's going to repeat. So this is always going to equal I. This is always going to equal negative 1. This one's always going to be negative I. And this is going to be positive 1. So notice also that the cycle goes from I to 1 to I to 1. So it goes I to negative 1, negative I to 1. I to negative 1, negative I to 1. Now why do I say that? Is because if now if I, I go I to the first power, I to the second power, I to the third power, I to the fourth, that means in this cycle I should now have I to the fifth, I to the sixth. Oops. If I keep following this cycle, I can keep going. I to the seventh, I to the eighth. I to the ninth, I to the tenth, I to the eleventh, I to the twelfth, I to the thirteenth. So I can keep going around this, but some of you might recognize there's kind of like a pattern. Um, I know that every every even number is falling on a one. I'll show you in just a second what I mean. So if you look here, the even numbers are always landing on the negative one or the positive one. All the ones that land on the positive one are actually a multiple of four. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So any even number will always lie on the positive one. And then any odd number will be either on the i or the negative i. So if I really think about this cycle, I can easily find out what i to the power of any random number is. So here are some practice problems. I want to see if you can simplify them on your own. So pause the video here and come back to check your answers. So hopefully by now you finished the practice problems. Um, if, I want you to take a look at my work here, starting with, you know, number one. Um, I broke it down. I made sure to take out the negative one so that it was an I. Same thing with number two. I took out the negative one and made it an I, but I found out that the square root of nine is three, so it's three I. Here I have the square root of negative one. I took it out. I made it an I. And then I have the square root of six, which I can't touch, so that's my final answer there. In number eight, I have I for the negative one, but then the square root of eight I meant to say for number five, sorry. For the square root of eight, I broke it down into a perfect square and a non-perfect square, four times two. So the square root of four is two. So it's two i rad two. Same thing with number six, I broke it down, find the largest perfect square. So this is four rad two with an i, so four i rad two. Now, for the rest of the examples, I made this, this um, cycle that I made earlier and I told myself I know multiples of 4 will always start here at the 1. So if I'm trying to get to i to the 11th, I'm thinking of 
what's the closest power of four that's less than 11? So if I count by fours, I'm counting by fours, I say four, eight, 12, 16. So I said the closest one to the number 11, but less than is eight. So I started here, i to the eighth, ninth, tenth, then I found that i to the eleventh is negative i. Then I did the same thing here. I'm saying, okay, well, what's the, you know, the power of four closest to 13? And that's 12. So 12 is going to start here because it's a multiple of four. 12, 13, oh, that means i to the 13th is i. And then, oh, it looks like I skipped this one, so I might as well do it on while I'm with you guys. What's the closest power of 4? 4, 8, 12, 16. Oh, look, I could start at i to the 12th power. And that's actually what I'm looking for. So my answer here is just 1. Same thing with 20. i to the 20th is at 1 because it's a power of 4. Same with i to the 24th, since it's a power of 4, it starts at 1. Now, i to the 27th is not a power of 4. If I count by 4 here on the side, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So 24, the next one is 28. So what you notice it's 28 is too big, so I had to start at the 24. So I started the 24 here at 1. Then 25, 26, 27, that means it's a negative i. So you have to make sure you draw the cycle correct. If you're going to start at 4, it goes from 1 to i to negative 1 to negative i. 1 to i to negative 1 to negative i. That cycle continues. So that's it. Those are your answers. I hope you... Um, I hope you understood. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Schoology. Have a great day, everybody.